my film is about empathy. You know, you know there is a Elon Musk who wants to fly to the Mars, and I told him, please, please, don't bring anything to the Mars but empathy. If we will not bring empathy to the Mars, we will destroy Mars, same as we destroyed this planet. <laughs> My film is about empathy. At least it's called for uh, empathy. It's kind of, I'm calling for empathy revolution. I guess it was sexual revolution, social revolution, industrial revolution, digital revolution, cultural revolution. It was many revolutions. Now time to empathy revolution. I was very little, I was like four years old and I had a friend which uh, my, uh, my friend was one month old it was a little piglet his name was Vasya and he was best best friend of my childhood and then of course in New Year's time he became dinner for my relatives and which destroyed my life and I, st I stopped talking to them, and I stopped talk eating meat. But in a way, it changed me, and I finally made film good. Yeah, there is no bad without good. How did I choose my characters and film locations? Actually, it happened opposite. I was I was planning to make a research trip like six months, and um, but in the first location, the first farm, I just came and I opened the door. It was twenty pregnant uh, pigs there, and Gunda came to me herself. And she chose me. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said to producer, look, we have metal strip, we don't need to search more. So it just was a miracle. Instead of six months, one day he found it. So it was never so easy in my life. <coughs> then I was searching for sanctuaries, not farms, but sanctuaries. Sanctuaries, because in sanctuaries animals are animals in sanctuaries, they know that human could be also good creatures. So animals can allow you to film them very close. You can come to animals in sanctuaries very close, like such distance. They will not run away, they will not... So even chicken will not run away because, because in sanctuaries people are nice to them. People in sanctuaries do not kill them, so... It was two months of speak story, one week of cows and one day of chicken. So it was maybe one and a half day of chicken. Actually one, one day because it was an unrepeatable situation. Chickens, they never been outside and you cannot repeat it. So, so it was one day. We will prepare a little bit, but, uh, but it was, so it's quite fast. We film only six hours in total. So for 90 minutes film to film six hours in total, it's quite good. It's kind of old fashioned cinema, you know.
I want it to come back to the beginning of cinema, you know, when when shot is important, not story is important, but shot itself. When, when cinema was born, um, when cinema was born, story was not important. Important was the shot itself. Story might be inside the shot, might be not. So that's why my visual concept was kind of to remem remind to people what is cinema about. Cinema is about watching, not talking, not telling story by watching. And that's why there is no words, no music, that's why it's black and white. Just my homage to the beginning of cinema, which was beautiful. And we spoiled it, we spoiled it completely. Assos, yeah, Assos. My last film was 96 frames per second. This one is 24, unfortunately, because we started at the same time. And for this particular film, I, I, I wanted to make old-fashioned movie, like 24 frames per second. But my next film, I will come back to 96, and I will never come back, because future is 96, and there is no point to make 24. There is no any reason. And I recommend everyone stop making 24 frames per second. There is no point to do it. Simply, in analog, yes, it was not possible to, to film faster. Today, it's ridiculous to film 24. We are losing so much. Let's film 96, everyone. No, this, this film was very simple. We use Amira. Amira is very nice for such kind of films. Uh, it's uh, like from Mari, so it's very nice camera for, for such kind of movies. We film in 2K, we did not, uh, because we know that today is, when you make extreme something good like 96, then you have only two cinemas in Germany can fill, project 96, and, but I wanted this film will be distributed in many, as many cinemas as possible, so I I made this step to normal, traditional way, so. Dolby Atmos is an absolutely revolutionary thing. I, I think it will take us 10 years to filmmakers be, before we understand how to use it correctly. Maybe at that time will be something new technology. Uh, new step, but today Dolby Atmos absolutely amazing uh, step, and uh, don't use it like a gu bullet flies from. <laughs> no, it's not Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos, when you, for example, in this film, I reduce. There is no voiceover. There is no music. I wanted you to be inside, sounds of animal, just to be there, to be completely to feel this atmosphere of beauty of the uh, sound, which we normally don't use, don't, don't hear, because we always listen in something <laughs> artificial from gadget and everything. So uh, music everywhere, sounds everywhere, video everywhere. We are producing, producing garbage, visual garbage, uh, intellectual garbage, which is pollution even more than plastic. So. I always say don't film if you can live without it. Yep. I always have my director's cut. I I actually never made two versions in my life. I'm lucky one. I'm lucky one. I always have real one. And somehow I was none of my films people change. I'm lucky. I'm really lucky because in my generation my friend Sakura, for example, all his film was for, forbidden, simply forbidden. And I was lucky. First three days after my first film, three days, my film was forbidden, but only three days. They didn't know what to do with it because it was still Soviet Union. It was 88, 1988, and they didn't know what to do with it. Is it, is it too dangerous to... So the Minister of Culture was shocked. And three days, they didn't know what to say. 
And then they say, okay, it was Gorbachev time already, perestroika, so it was possible to speak, freedom of speech, very short. Now we came back to dictatorship again, there is no freedom of speech in my country. But that's why in my films, almost no words. The last 20 years, I'm making a film without words.